This is a 1997 Land Rover Defender. It is one of the few modern automobiles that has increased in value since it came out. And today, we're going to find out why. Now this particular Defender belongs to David here, who you should follow on Instagram because he runs a car dealer that specializes in automotive curiosities. And boy is the Defender a curiosity. But first, a little history. The Defender was only officially imported to the US for four model years. 93, we got a long wheelbase version, and we got short wheelbase versions like this in 94, 95, and 97. Only three model years, and only a few thousand models. The only reason they stopped selling the Defender in the US was that in 1998, the US government mandated that all new cars have airbags. And Land Rover was like, airbags? We can't afford that crap. And that was the end of the Defender. But here's the crazy thing. Back then, the Defender cost like 40 grand new. Today, a really, really nice one will sell for $100,000. Compare that to, say, a 97 Isuzu Trooper, which was about 30 grand back in 97. And now you can pick one up on Craigslist for 80 bucks and a crack rock. So why did the Defender go up in value so much? Well, it isn't performance, I'll tell you that. The Defender 90 had a big honking V8 that made 182 horsepower. That's less than a Mazda 3. So you're thinking that maybe it had a lot of torque. Nah. It had only 230 pound feet. The Defender was just slow, as I will prove in this acceleration test. It certainly wasn't features. Back when the Defender came out, air conditioning was an option. So was carpeting. Fortunately, this is a 1997 model, considered the cream of the Defender crop because of all of its amenities. What kind of amenities, you ask? Well, for one, there's this nifty sliding window that you can open in front or in back. <laughs> Worried about someone breaking in? Don't worry, the window has a very advanced locking system. Speaking of locks, there are the ones on the doors. Also very advanced. And then there's the tailgate. If you're trying to get into your SUV, you probably just open up the tailgate. In this SUV, you open the tailgate, and then you open the window with a zipper. And there's a reverse light, but just one. Air conditioning was a popular option. And some of the switches were conveniently placed right where you'd expect them, on the gauge cluster. There was a convenient parking brake in the driver's footwell. There's a six disc CD changer, but no anti-lock brakes. Want some outside air inside the cabin? Flip the vent switch and you've got it. In fact, the Defender was so advanced that when you put on the turn signal, a little light came on in the gauge cluster to remind you that it was on. Of course, it didn't tell you which turn signal was on. This ain't a Rolls Royce. It isn't comfort either. For proof, here's a comparison test between my Range Rover, which is 10 years newer than the Defender and worth only 11 grand, and the Defender, which is worth six times as much. No, but really, it's like a Happy Meal wristwatch. So here's what we've learned about the Defender. It's slow, it's uncomfortable, it's unreliable, it has virtually no equipment, it's 20 years old, and it costs more than my Aston Martin. So how does it justify its price? Because it's so cool. Just look at this thing. It's a Land Rover Jeep. You know who owns a Jeep Wrangler? Normal people. People who leave their dealership license plate frame on. People who live in an apartment complex with spaces for future resident parking. 
People who get in fights with strangers about Android versus iPhone. But you know who owns a Defender? Cool people! Having a Defender is like the ultimate SUV trump card. You have a Defender and a guy in a Jeep comes up to you and you're like, oh, yeah. So is it unreliable and slow and uncomfortable? Of course. But here's the thing. Defender people, they don't really care what you think. <laughs> I can move the front one behind the rear one. Oh my god, it goes the whole way? Yeah. <laughs> Except it stops. 